So we're going to have a throw with Steve. Steve Beaton's renowned for his rhythm, his longevity in the game. So let's see what we can learn from Steve Beaton's throw. Welcome, Steve. Thanks for joining us. So how are you going to get me this perfect rhythm that you've got? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Um, I just try to just try to make everything as simple as possible, really. So I always try to keep my arms so it's going straight and just try to keep it flowing. So I just try to do it all in one movement and just bring it straight up. And then the same with my next one and the next one. So everything's just coming in a rhythm. So is that something you've worked on that rhythm or is it more natural to you? I've always had a rhythm. So it's, it's one of them things that, you know, it can, it can go can go wrong, obviously. It's just, you know, through nerves or, um, you know, just, maybe under pressure and things like that you know you you might tend to pull it a little bit or you know throw a bit faster or so you, you know. might speed up yourself then yeah yeah so what do you do what do you do to stop that then um you just try to step back sometimes and just just wait and then yeah take could, a deep breath or i mean it you could do with somebody telling you what you're doing wrong down on the floor really halfway through a game sometimes because you, you don't realize that maybe you are throwing too quick or you are pulling, you know what I mean? As far as you, you're concerned, you're doing everything right, you know? Yeah. Um, and it's sometimes it's not till you watch back that you realise that you're probably thrown a bit too quick or got overexcited and maybe you should have just stopped and thought about, you know, maybe just you know, if you watch a few of the players now, they'll stop before they throw for the double. Okay, and you've obviously, you've been playing the game for, is it four decades now? <laughs> <laughs> Make it five? No, no, yeah, four, four is long enough, yeah. And uh, where, where, what do you put that longevity down to? Because you're competing with some pretty strong talent these days. Um, probably just, just try to keep the game as simple as possible. Like I say, it's not always going to go right, but if you, if you, instead of concentrating on every single dart, you know, if you can get a rhythm going, obviously where the first one goes, you're hoping that the next two will follow, you know, but... Uh, so not putting too much pressure on yourself on every throw then? Well, yeah. And also, if you are under pressure, I do find it a bit easy if, if you are a quicker thrower to, to go through that pressure. Because obviously, um, if, if say you just lined up everyone slowly, you know, you can feel your arm going and everything started to, you know, through the pressure like... So it's, you're, looking at, you're looking at three in a, on a cycle and just getting that automatic release yeah. then? Yeah, that, it's good. And that's why I try to plan my route beforehand as well, because obviously, you know, if you want to finish, you don't want to be stopping halfway through it. So you want to know exactly if you get a single, where you're going to go next. You know so you're, I mean? you're a bit like in chess, you've, you're kind of planning the moves ahead, are you? Yeah, yeah. So if you if you get a single, you miss the treble, then you should know exactly where you're going to go for the double. So, so if you're on two six stop. eight and you're thinking what you want to have left after three, so you're you're already thick. So you're not putting yourself under pressure to think. No, no. And if you're if you're on say I don't know uh, finish say you're on 108 finish, then you might go 18s and out, or you might go treble 20, and then you're down for the 48. So it, you obviously try to plan the route, but. If I'm going 108 and I go for the treble 20 and I get a 20, it's going to leave me 88. So I've got to, I've got to make sure I'm either going to go for the treble 20 and leave double 14, or I'm going to switch. So yeah. it's a sort of planning ahead as well. Okay. And your passion um, to play is, is as strong now as it's ever been. Is, is that where do you get this passion to keep playing from? Um, probably because I've always played the sport, you know, it's, it's one of them things that you, you know, I've been brought up with. Like you say, I've been playing for 40 odd years now, so it's, it's one of them things that, you know, I've been doing for so long now, it, it'll feel strange not to be doing it, if you know what I mean. And this lockdown's been a big eye-opener, really, from going out all the time and, then, you know, being away three or four nights a week to being at home all the time. It it's, just shows you, you know, what, you, what life was like you know with with the traveling yeah so how busy you were yeah. yeah and i'm guessing i'm guessing you've not played anywhere near as much darts as you used to then no and it's been it's it's funny because my practice obviously is, is exhibitions um and things like that so like without doing the exhibitions you know it's that's me practice being you know i find it very hard just to stay on my own and practice yeah. on the board. but you used to as a youngster <clears> didn't you 
when you were lot, when you first came to the game, you used yeah, to practice. Yeah, I mean, I mean, when I was younger, I mean, you could go down to the pub every night and you'd find somebody in there to have a game. You know, I used to get to the pub at half six, seven o'clock, and there was always somebody having a throw. Um, so you were you were playing a lot of matches back when you first started. Yeah. yeah, at least at least six, five, six times a week. Yeah. You know, so was that sort of winner stays on? Yeah, I mean, on Sunday lunch, you know, you used to like you used to get in the pub for a, it was used to be Sunday hours, then twelve till about two, was it or half two? And uh, obviously, if you got knocked off the board, you never get <laughs> you never on. get back on it again. Then, right, no. so you had to you had yeah. to yeah. I see what you mean. And I always found the good, it was a good practice, like in the week when I used to go up and, and play, you know, because you know nobody likes marking, do they? So, but if you lost, no. you have to mark. So yeah, so you always let them go first. So you know they had the slight advantage, one leg, you know, and obviously if you lost, then you got to do the marking. But so and, and your your grip's quite unique. If we can just try and show the camera how. If we can get into a, a position where, if you turn this way, Steve, swap with me because you can get the camera in. So if you hold your hand down, just show. So Steve's actually holding the dart way at the back, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, I've usually got the other stems in. So yeah. <laughs> there's slightly different stems in this one, but yeah, I hold it right at the back. I mean, some people hold it at the front, but I, I tend to hold it at the so back. So do, do you get any, if you just hold it still there so we can have a look, do you get any point of the finger touching the front when you throw or? Um, not that I know, not that I feel, I mean, I've, you try thinking about where your fingers are actually on it, but no. So there's no there's no finger on it and, it, and it's, is it, a, do you feel, is, it, is that a pushing motion? Yeah, more of a push than, yeah. yeah. So it's not, it's not a pull, it's a push. Push. That's why the grip's important as well, because obviously you, you don't want it to slip. Yeah. You to get, if you've got a very smooth dart, you think it's just going to slide through your hand. You know what I mean? So. So that feel in your hand is very important to you then. Oh yeah, yeah. You need the, you definitely need the grip. Yeah. And I that, mean, that smooth push is, is obviously where you get your rhythm from. Well, it's, it's all just trying <coughs> trying to do it all in one smooth motion, really. Yeah, and you've got. I notice with with you holding it at the back, you can see that they they. Your darts go in at a nice, a nice. It's like it's like you're, you're throwing them on the line of a curve. Yeah, I mean when Phil when Phil was throwing, you know Taylor. I mean it's his darts <laughs> went in like that. I could never understand, you know how how he did that. You know because I've always ever since I've thrown the dart always goes that way. Yeah, but you're very tall, aren't you? So you're arcing it over. Maybe if you're shorter, you're you're throwing yeah, a bit more we, up. Yeah, but we used to have smaller players in them days. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they're still they're still the same. I don't know. I think I don't know. Different I, technique. Then, yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, his darts are a lot longer as well, weren't they, Phil? You know, th that made it them drop down a so, bit. But so that angle you're coming in, mate, it's just is a nice is a natural angle as a result of the rhythm. You're not trying to. You're yeah, and obviously I like it on sit above the, the treble because then you've got you've got uh, something to aim at then to come right. into the treble, haven't you? Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I've always because if I drop obviously below the treble, then you, you know you, you you have to switch them because you know it's it's very hard to get over the top. So, and on the on the rare occasions that you actually practice these days, what <laughs> games are you going to practice? What are you going to do for you? Say if you got half an hour, you're going to have a go. What would you what would you be working on? I'd go. I usually go around the board on doubles. So I'll have three darts at double one. If I get double one, my first dart, I'll switch to two and then double three, and I'll work all the way around the board. But if I miss a double, then I'll go back to one again. So I've, okay, got, I've, got, so to go, right. I've got to go around in one go. In, in what, so you get three at double one. Yeah. So, so you're putting a little bit of pressure on you at that last throw. If you're on the, so if you get to the say, five. Yeah, say I was on 10 then, yeah. and I missed three out of 10, I've got to go back to one. Okay, so that is a good, that's a good game to put you under yeah. pressure. So you, you go all the way around to the ball then. I'll, I'll usually finish on the ball. Um, and then um, maybe just 501s. I've got to do at least three and um, 15 darters on the trot, or I can't leave it. Right, away. okay. So it's so a bit like Gary player holding one out the bunker. You try and. So if you did it quite quickly, that could be your practice session done for the day then? Yeah, yeah. I mean. So you know you're in good form, and, and good enough's good enough, I guess. I think sometimes you can put. You're expecting too much. You know, it's, you know, it's the same before a match. I think sometimes people can throw too long, and by the time you come up to your game, you know you're getting a bit tired. Then you know. Yeah. Have you? Do you? Have you monitored that over your career? Have you found that you know what your peak time to play is and how much rest you need? Yeah. I mean, if I'm playing, a, if I'm playing in a tournament, I'll usually make sure I'm there three hours before my match. Um, 
so I'm, I'm well prepared, ready for it, you know, and I'll make sure I've ate maybe an hour before that, so, you know, because I, I can't eat and play, so. Yeah, because that, that's, because I'm guessing you get yeah, some yeah, adrenaline. Yeah, that's the, right, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and, and what's that, what's that first game like? Because obviously if you lose your first game in your business, you haven't earned any money, you're out. So what, how does, how I think, do you I deal think with that? that? I, think, I think the first game is the most pressured game, really. On the on the pro tour at the moment because you, like you say you 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 want to pick some money up so you know if, if you win your first game <clears throat> you know you're guaranteed money and then maybe you can rest a little bit you know not not rest but relax a little bit so how do, do you do you feel does your throw feel different in the second game if you've won the first um not really I mean you're still still throwing the same it's just you maybe your, your mentality is a bit different you know you, Maybe you, uh, you 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 tend to relax a little bit, but then you got to watch you don't relax too much, and then you obviously you lose your game. But I mean, it is nice. It is nice once you've won one because you, you tend to relax a little bit then, don't yeah. you? You know, you tend to think, oh right, you know, you, you you're not that useless. You you <laughs> won a game. Yeah, can win a game. Yeah. Well, brilliant, Steve. We've learned from Steve now. So basically, is try and keep it really simple, nice straight arm back and through. And don't expect too much. I think that's the message we get from Steve. We're all as dart players. We want to do so well. I get that. But Steve, thanks for your insights. I really enjoyed that. Great.